Hi, this is the video to show you how to create the backboard for your steady hand game. And um, so this is one I've prepared earlier, and I'm going to show you how to go through the stages of preparing this. Um, so what we're using is we're using a program called uh, 2D Design, and um, that is a CAD program, computer aided design program, and that will allow you to send it to the laser cutter. Um, and the laser cutter will cut out and engrave various parts, whichever way you colour code it, and we'll go into that a little bit later. Um, so, uh, this here is my backboard um, for my steady hand game. So, these blue holes here are for the track, and basically, the track is the copper that will create some sort of shape, something like that, that you have to uh, you have to put your handle through, um, trying not to touch the wire. Um, as you can see, I've got a larger hole here. Um, that one is for your push to make switch. Uh, your push to make switch is this switch that will reset your game if you get it wrong. Um, so that's there. Uh, this circle in Bart's eye, that's for your LED, your light emitting diode, okay? And that will go on if you don't complete the game. Uh, both of these and one side of one of these, it doesn't matter which one, will be connected to your circuit board, okay? So you need holes right the way through your wood, um, and this will be cut out of a piece of plywood um, on the laser cutter, um, and these holes will need to be there, and it saves you having to drill them. So, as you can see, it's Bart Simpson on his skateboard. Um, the red section here, um, the laser cutter will engrave that, so you'll have a little sort of indent in your in your piece of plywood uh, that will help you paint it later. Now, there are certain things that we're looking for when we're going to mark you. Um, what we need you to have is we need you to have the two track holes, you need to have your push to make switch hole, we also need your LED hole, and we also need a design that is engraved. Um, we also want you to have a shape of some description, so it's not a rectangle, uh, that will be cut out to make your shape slightly more interesting. So, what I'd like you to, to do now is I'd like you to be opening 2D design yourself and I'm going to talk you through the different stages of producing this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to exit this myself and uh, show you 2D design. Now, this thing here that I'm just moving, that bit is uh, my recording tool so please don't try and pause it using this button because uh, it won't do anything you need to use the controls at the bottom so what you're looking for is you're looking for an icon like that okay 2d design quite often got v2 after it as well so what you want to do is double click on it okay and it will come up like that all you want to do is click anywhere else on that page okay ignore that box now let's move this to a more convenient place that's a better place to have it right so your first task is to create a rectangle. So under here, uh, shapes, so you want to hold it down. Um, along these, this bar, you'll see that there are loads and loads of different shapes you could, you could have. You could have hexagons, you can have polygons, you can have all sorts of different weird and wonderful shapes. But we just want a rectangle. So if yours isn't already set to that, you want it on that one. Okay. What we also want to do is we also want to click on grid lock. Okay. Griglet coordinates are going to be 10 millimeters each, okay? So as long as yours, when you click on it, looks exactly the same as that, you are doing fine. And we're going to click OK. Now what that means is, as you'll see, my cross is now just jumping to each of those dots. Now, the reason we're using this is because it's a really accurate tool to show us how big ours is going to be. So rather than being really fiddly, it's going to be accurate. So somewhere on your page, I want you to click somewhere near the bottom, click there. Now you'll see at the very bottom, everything is in millimetres. We use millimetres in um, technology, so we're going to be measuring in millimetres. Now the first box that says abs, you don't need to concern yourself about that one. It's the rel box, the relative box. And what we want to do is we want to make ours 110 in the first, so 110, and then we want it to be 150. So let's do that, 110 by 150. So we're looking at along the corridor, 
of 110 and up the stairs of 150 and then we're going to click and that is the size of your steady hand game backboard i know it doesn't look very big on this however it is the right size now what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in and zoom in tool is here so if you click on zoom it will say zoom last zoom media zoom all so zoom all will give us the, what we've got at the moment we want zoom in so if you don't have zoom in just click on that one and we're just going to zoom in here now what you'll notice is everything you do is still clicking to all of these these, these uh, little markers now if you press gridlock again it will allow you to be free flowing okay so sometimes it's useful sometimes it's not now what we're going to do is we're going to choose our image okay so what I would like you to do is I would like you to now go to Google so there we go I've got Google pre preset up and um, what I want you to do is I want you to type in whatever your design is going to be so mine's Bart Simpson so let's pick the Bart Simpson now you really need a black and white image so a cartoon style image so no color realistically it's easier for when we're going to change our image to that line drawing so Bart Simpson black, black and white and if we hit enter you'll see that there are various images coming up so if we click on images and then you can go and have a peruse of whichever one you like. So let's have a look at these. So which one was it? It was that one that I liked. So I'm going to click on him. And I'm going to right click on him. And I'm going to save picture as. And we will call him Bart. Let's just call him Bart. That's fine. That's saved in my picture areas. Can you make sure you save it in your picture areas so you know where you're going? Let's get rid of that. I don't need that now. Let's go back to 2D design. Now, I don't want to be on gridlock at the moment to insert my picture. So let's go to File and Import File. Now, what you'll have to do is you'll have to find the area that you've saved your pictures in. Now, I know that mine's under Library and mine's under Picture. And I called it Bart. So let's click at Bart. Okay. Okay. And we're just going to click OK. That's that's absolutely fine as it is. Now, what you'll see is this is absolutely massive. So let's zoom to all. Okay. If we move him using the middle bit, we can see that he is much much larger than the area I've got for him to fit into. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roughly put him level with that bottom part. So it's roughly level here. And then with this tool, okay, I'm going to shrink him down so he'll be able to fit. So there we go. Let's go with that. There we go. Right. Now, if I'm trying to move him, I need to the middle, middle icon. And let's see if he fits in there. Um, maybe a little bit smaller. Right. Now that we've got him, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop him there again. I'm going to go to bitmaps, and then I'm going to go to vectorize. Now, what that does is it changes it so that the computer can read it. So let's vectorize. We have to click on him, and it will come up with a page like this. So what we don't want is we don't want all of these different different colours and greys and things we just want ours in monochrome so if we click on monochrome it's either black or it's white which is why we've got a black and white image in the first place right now we want colour in the background is white colour in the foreground is black that's fine and then we'll click OK and OK again and we will end up with something like that. Now you'll remember that that doesn't look quite the same as the image we had before. So what we need to do is we need to change the colours. Now we need to go onto this tool, the Select Objects tool, and we're just going to click on him. Now if you look up here, you've got the line colour 
and you've got the fill colour. The line is the bit around the outside and the fill is anything inside it. So the line colour we want is red. Because engraving on the laser cutter is red. So we've got our line, that's absolutely fine. We're going to click in our colour section and we are going to select red. Click OK. Now if I click off of him, then I'll show you that we've got red around the outsides. Now this black patches, we don't actually want. So we're going to click on him again, and this will be the fill part. Okay, if we click on colour, it'll only come up with this. Okay, and it's not white that we want, we just don't want anything, so we'll get rid of that. If we click on fill, okay, we've got the option of no fill. Click on no fill, click OK and then you will see that he looks like that. So if we click away from him, you can see that he's only got the red outline. Now if we want to move him, we do need to move him with the middle tool. He's a little bit easier to see now, a bit clearer, to see whether he fits or not. He's still a little bit wide, because I don't really want him coming off the edge of this box. So let's just make him a little bit smaller. There we go. And move him sort of centrally. Might want him a bit higher, actually. Let's move him a bit higher. Mm, still not quite happy. Let's just... Right. There we go. That looks better to me. Right, so we've now got our image. So that's one of the four things. Four? One. One of the five things, even, that you need to, to do in order to uh, get your marks for this part of the project. Now, if you do anything wrong and you want to correct it, if you press Ctrl and Z, it will undo what you've done. So it's just a little helpful hint if you need it. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do the uh, little track holes at the bottom. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to zoom in. So let's go to zoom in. And we're going to go to the very, very bottom. Now, realistically, you need yours to be somewhere in this sort of area. Okay? Because if you start putting them all over the place, you're going to really struggle with your soldering your track up to your uh, circuit board. I would suggest, if you can, somewhere in that region and somewhere in that region would be the best part. However, it's up to you. Right, so circles. We're going to draw some circles now. Now, our circles need to be pretty accurate. And they actually need to be two millimetres in diameter. Now, diameter means right the way across the circle from one side to the other side. Now, as you'll see, you've got two little red dots on here. So that's the sort of circle we want. So that would give us from one side to the other which we want two millimeters but we're actually going to use this radius tool so you draw a point in the circle in the center of the circle and then you stretch it out however far now if we want a diameter of two our radius is only going to be one it's always half so what we're going to do is we're going to put our grid lock back on because this makes it a little bit easier to actually put the center of the circle in a specific place that is going to be there for this one and as you'll see that's massive and if you look at the relative box the second box down at the bottom um, we've got 10 millimeters 20 millimeters 30 millimeters is much bigger than we actually want so actually if you just stretch across to gridlock and ungridlock it now you'll see that it's going it's not going in such massive huge steps now this is a bit fiddly but we want it to be one relative of the first one needs to be as close to one as possible and 1.09 is pretty close let's see 83 90 so i think that's as close as we're going to get it so if you click there then we've got our little circle now we want another one of those so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to select it and if i press Control and c that's copied it and Control and v on my keyboard i've now got a second one so what we're going to do is we're going to move that and we're going to put our grid lock back on because we want it to be in the same place on this side so using the central tool we're going to just oh, 
quite know what's going on here. Let's, let's take the gridlock off, maybe. There we go. And there we have it. We've got our two little circular holes for our track. So if we zoom out to the whole thing, oops, that's wrong at all. Zoom to the whole thing. Right, we now need to put in our LEDs. Okay, we've only got one LED. Our LED is going to need to be five millimeters in diameter, so that's two and a half in radius. Now, I think that it's always quite a good idea if you've got a character to put them in like the eyes or the mouth or something like that, something that's going to light up. So I'm going to be putting mine up here. So if we zoom in to that section, it's always easier to zoom in to do something so that you can have more accuracy over what you're doing. So we're going to use the circles tool again. Um, I'm going to click somewhere roughly in the middle of his eye. And using that relative box, I want to measure 2.5 millimetres. So let's keep on growing at 2.5. There we go. Now, that doesn't look like it's very much in his eye, because as you can see, it's kind of moved a little bit over uh, where his uh, where the circle of his eye finishes. So if we just collect our select tool, we can just move that and we'll just use the middle box just to move it so that it's a little bit more out of the way. And there we go. So let's now go back to zoom to all. And now we've got our, our LED hole for our eye, which actually if we look at it, look absolutely massive. So let's zoom in and check this again. I don't think that's right. And I think we need to delete that one. Try this again. So 2.5. I don't know what I was doing before, but that, that's uh, looking much more like uh, the size we need it. We're still having a funny five moments, right? So let's go to zoom. Oh, there we go. That's much better. Now I'm going to put the uh, push to make switch on the skateboard. You can put it where you like. Um, it could be on the background. It could be on the image. It could be maybe his other eye or something like that. Um, but remember that the push to make switch is bigger, um, and because it's bigger, it is going to be more difficult to disguise into something. Um, so that's why I'm going to put it in the middle of his skateboard. So I'm going to use the same tool as we had before, and I quite like it in the centre. So the push to make switch actually measures seven millimetres. So we're looking for three point five in that relative box, that first number. So let's. All right, I'm struggling. Can you see all of those numbers? They're not really getting anywhere near. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and then Control Z. The reason that is, is because I didn't zoom in. So let's just zoom into that sort of section. And you should be able to see now when I do this. But it's a lot finer. The measurements are a lot easier to see them going up. So 3.5 is what we're aiming for. So I think that 3.53 is absolutely fine. Click it and then we've got our push to make switch. There we go. So now we've got um, quite a lot of our components that we need. We are missing the line that goes around bar. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you how to do next. So um, using the path tool, I find that's the easiest. You can have all sorts of different path tools. It might be worth having a fiddle around with them. Um, but the one that I want to use is the path tool. Now, what I suggest you do is I suggest you start outside of the box. And there is a reason for that. I will tell you about that in a minute. But I suggest you start slightly outside of the box. Um, and then once you click, you can then bend it. So you click and bend and then click to the next point and you can bend um, and then we can get it back. 
um, so continue doing this whilst you're uh, going around the outside. And once you've finished your um, path around the outside, I would suggest that you go slightly off the uh, like that, and then double click at the end. Now we've got that little tick. It doesn't actually matter, okay? So we've now got a line that is going around the outside. So in theory, the laser cutter is going to cut all the way around here and cut this section out. Now, it's also, at the moment, going to be cutting this rectangle. So what we need to do is we need to get rid of the rectangle that is above those lines. So, if we go to delete, and we go to delete part, okay, so that's that, with that symbol, the one that says delete part of an object between the nearest two intersections. What that will do is that will where those cross, it will delete off just a bit above it if we click above it. So you click on the locate and it's just click that bit off. So let's get rid of that bit and also that bit. Now we've also got the edges, the bits that are, the extra bits that I asked you to draw. So let's zoom in to that section. There we go. And then with the delete section tool, just click on the edge bit. There we go. And that should now give you your shape. So let's see this, the whole thing. There we go. Now, what you need to do is you need to also have your colour coding ready. Okay. So black to the laser cutter means it needs to cut it out. And red means that it needs to engrave it. So it's not going to go all the way through, but it's just going to burn the pattern into it. Or picture. Now, we also use blue, and we use blue to instruct it to cut, but it might need to do it as a set of things straight away. So for yours, what we will do is we will engrave, and then we will cut these inner parts out, and then we will cut the outside afterwards. It's just an easier way for the laser cutter to understand what it needs to do. So what you need to do is select both of your track holes, your push to make switch hole, and your LED hole. Now, the, whoops, that's not the LED hole. The way I've done that is I'm just holding the shift button, that's the one with the arrow on it, and clicking on those things. And what we're going to go to is we're going to go to the line. Oops, not that one. That's one. We're going to go to colour. So it's line, colour, line, colour. I'm going to select blue and then we're going to hit OK. And if we click off of it, you will now see that those circles that we've got are blue. So what will tell the what will give the instructions in the laser cutter is to do the red sections first, the engraving. Then we'll ask it to do the blue bits where it's going to cut these things out. And then we're going to ask it to do the very outside cut. Now, what you need to do now is you need to save it. So if we go to File and we go to Save As, I need you to save it in a technology folder. If you don't have a technology folder in your C drive, can you make a technology folder? I'm going to uh, save mine in my documents area. It's just where I save all of my stuff on my computer. So. I'm going to call mine um, Steady Hand Game Bart Skateboard. Uh, no particular reason for me typing in capitals, it's just a way of saving. And then hit save. Okay. You need to save yours in your technology folder. Um, and that is your Steady Hand Game Backboard finished. Um, if you need to refer to different parts of this video, please rewind it and use it how you need it 
want to be used, you know, so that it reminds you of various things that you might need to do. Um, if you want to experiment with things like putting text on yours, so we can put text type things in, so um, we might just call it sit hand game. Click OK. You can choose different fonts and things from the settings. That's rather large, isn't it? But please have a try with some various different tools on here. Um, and incorporate them if you wish. So if you've got this done really, really quickly, you can um, you can obviously experiment and have things like that on there. And um, remember the colour coding. Remember that you need to save anything that you do. And hopefully you will come up with something that is a really, really, really good design that you can. Uh, that you can have a lot of fun with. Um, I'm just clicking on a few things. So now you've got steady hand game. That would be engraved as well. Um, good luck. If you've got any questions, please ask your teacher. Um, but have a fiddle and have a play with some of these tools. Um, they might just give you some little, uh, little things that, that, that boost your design. Um, and good luck. I shall. Uh, I shall probably speak to you in another video. Bye.